Hey guys, it's Ryan from Brutal Cities here. Hope you're all well. Uh, I wanted to share a quick little tutorial using oil paints to do the lettering for the COVID-19 fundraiser disinfectant station objective. We've just released this kit and profits from this kit will be donated to the Centre for Disaster Philanthropy COVID-19 Fund and you can find it at BrutalCities.com. So I've been obsessed with oil paints lately and we'll do another more in-depth step-by-step tutorial for oil paint weathering soon. I can't recommend oils enough, they're super fun to use and you have a lot of control over them. It's easy to manipulate the paint by working the brush with some solvent to clean up mistakes. So things you'll need, you'll need a painted objective or terrain piece, a gloss varnish, I use Rust-Oleum acrylic gloss varnish, you'll need some oil paints, you can find these at any art store and I'm not sure if brand really matters, burnt sienna, a dark grey and a titanium white are ideal. I used to zinc white on this piece, but titanium whites are actually stronger and less translucent, so better for lettering. You also need an odorless solvent or artist's white spirit. I've used both and I can't really tell the difference. Your art shop should have them. So the first thing you should do is paint your objective as you normally would. I chose a nice bright orange from Vallejo and I used my airbrush to paint it. I was going for a simple, flat, minimal paint scheme that would stand out and look modern. How I imagined a near future automated disinfection station might look. After the paint has fully dried after 12 hours or so, seal the piece with your gloss varnish. This will protect your paint job from the solvent that's used to manipulate the oil paint. It also allows the oil paint or wash to easily run into the recesses using capillary action. This is called a pin wash. I think it's the easiest way to paint engraved letters. I know if I was going to try and paint the letters with acrylics normally, I'd probably mess it up and get paint everywhere. But with the capillary action, it's pretty easy. You need to ensure that the varnish is fully dried before using oils, just check the varnish directions. With oil paints, you want to allow the linseed oil to be absorbed by some cardboard for at least half an hour to remove the excess oil. You can see here the oil has leached into the cardboard already. First I'll make an oil wash by mixing some odorless solvent with a little bit of brown oil paint. Just experiment to find the right consistency. Here I'm giving a light brown wash to make the orange station a little bit more realistic as it's been in the elements in the streets for a while, particularly focusing on the base. Mix the solvent and white paint into a pin wash. You can experiment to find the perfect ratio. Dab the paint into the lettering. You'll see the capillary action quickly fill the letters with paint. If you make a mistake, just wait 5 minutes or so and you can place the brush in some clean solvent, dabbing the excess off on a tissue. Now you can use the damp brush to clean off the mistakes in excess paint. And this is why I love oils so much. You can leave them for hours and come back to your work and the solvent will reactivate the paint. Just don't wait too long to come back to the paint job if it's very hot. I painted the Easy Oil Shop and the Institute in summer on a 40 degrees Celsius day. The paint actually dried before I could even finish the job and the spirit wasn't reactivating it. Now get some oil paint on your brush. You can experiment with pure oil or oil paint and a tiny bit of solvent. Place small dabs over the kit to simulate rust, moving the brush in a downward motion. Wait at least half an hour for the paint to dry a little bit. Then come back with a clean brush and some solvent, wiping most of it off as before. In a downwards motion, spread the paint to simulate rust or grime streaks, like in this picture. Remember with oils you have a lot of control, and if the streaks are too heavy you can always use solvent to remove it. I've tried grime streaks with various acrylic products and washes but they just don't seem controllable enough for me to get a realistic effect compared to oils. When you finish wait about 24 hours and then varnish the product to protect it. I use a water based polyurethane matte varnish from Vallejo with my airbrush. So there you have it, I hope you enjoyed the first Brutal Cities tutorial. We'll do another one on a Bantan office building. Let us know what you thought about this tutorial. Uh, and at BrutalCities.com we have a mailing list which is the surest way to be notified of new tutorials or products. See you next time.